Hello, this is Gareth from Creative Connors. In this short video demonstration, I'm going to highlight some of the features that are new in SpikeMonk. I won't be going into great detail, but this should give you a good overview, regardless whether you are currently using our Avista software or are just getting started out with a new Creative Connors system and SpikeMark. SpikeMark's user interface has been completely redesigned for this release to make it less cluttered and easier to navigate. The main window is composed of three parts. On the right side of the window, there is an editing pane where you can adjust all the configuration parameters for motors and the new stagehand effects input-output device. Inside this editing panel, there are categories of parameters that can be scrolled through as a giant list or expanded and collapsed to see more or less information at any point. Beneath the editing pane, there's a cue controller. The Q controller mimics the same functionality that you'll find on the physical showstopper base station device. The Q controller allows you to run your entire show on screen using just your mouse so that if you don't have a showstopper base station hooked up, you can still run through all of your cues. The upper area of the main window has a 3D representation of your stage. All of the motors in your show will appear in this stage model as either a winch or as a turntable. The view can be rotated and zoomed to get a closer look at what's on your stage. Alternatively, the preset view buttons allow you to see the stage as a plan, front, right, left, or isometric projection. The main area of the window is the cue grid. Here you can view your show as a table of information where each stagehand motor or effects is a column of the table, and the cues are represented as rows in the table. We can easily add and remove cues by right-clicking and requesting it to add a cue. And to remove that cue, we simply right-click on it and delete the cue, confirming that, in fact, we do want to delete this newly added cue Adding stagehands is just as easy. We can add a motor, or we can add a new stagehand effects. To delete them, we just right click again and say delete, confirming in the dialog box that in fact we do want to delete the stagehand. Cues can be collapsed or expanded to see more or less information at any point. Oftentimes when running your show, you'll find that you want to collapse a lot of this information so you don't get distracted by the parameters that won't affect you as you're running the queues. We can collapse entire queues or collapse all queues by right-clicking. To get them all expanded again, just right-click and expand all. The three main areas of the, of the window can be resized by clicking and dragging on the splitter bars. This allows you to see more or less information in any of the panes at any point. To collapse a pane, simply double click on a splitter bar and it will disappear. To get that back, double click on the splitter bar again. On big shows, you may find it's nice to collapse all the panes except for our main cue grid. However, you probably still want to see the stage model. In that instance, from the window menu, select Stage Model Viewer. This will bring up a floating window that contains the stage model viewer. You can create multiple stage model viewers and size them each independently. Perhaps we'll make this one larger. And we can zoom in. And maybe we'll want to see a plan view in this one. But up here, we'll keep it with the isometric view a little bit zoomed in. This gives us a nice way to see the information that we want to see and get rid of it, all the information that maybe we don't want to see. If we were using multiple monitors, we could drag these stage model viewers onto those separate monitors, allowing us to keep the Q grid on our main monitor, 
and then the stage model viewers on a separate monitor. Another type of floating window that we can bring up is called the log viewer. The log viewer gives us a little insight into what's going on behind the scenes. Here is a list of all of the actions that Spike Mark is executing in the background. These actions can be sorted by time, by source, severity, and the description of what that message was. The log viewer comes in real handy when you're troubleshooting a show. Perhaps you ran a queue and a motor didn't complete where you thought it should, or maybe you hit a limit switch and you didn't realize it. The log viewer will give you instant insight to see what happened during that queue. That wraps up our whirlwind tour of the interface. Please take a look at our other tutorials as we dive deeper into SpikeMark.